in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I have come tonight that I may know you. I have come tonight that I may see you. I have come tonight that I may learn of your ways. He said, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Bless his name. Declare your desperation, your expectation, your desire. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The house of God is a house of revelation. The meaning of that is that when you access light, you will ascend, you will rise, leaving your former self, leaving your former situation, your former realities, and you rise to a new level. We take time to invest in his presence because outside of his presence, no matter what else we have, we do not have anything. Moses was speaking to a people who were already warriors. They already had the gold from Egypt. They already had the treasures, but he said, if your presence will not go with us, in spite of everything that we have, the advantage of number, the advantage of resources, but without your presence, it says, do not take us from here. It's a powerful prayer to ask God to reveal himself to you. Hallelujah. Father, we have come tonight that you will speak to us. We have come with hearts open, hearts desperate. Spirit breaker. Break our walls down. It's a prayer, Lord. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Good evening, everybody. Please be seated. 
I welcome you tonight to his presence where your life will never be the same. If you believe that, shout a receiving amen. 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 I welcome everyone, those connecting online. We take time to welcome you because there are no fans in this ministry. Everyone who connects, connects by light, connects with understanding, and connects with the purpose of receiving, becoming. Hallelujah. So there are no fans. All who are connected across the globe, God has something to say. Fasten your seatbelts, and I want you to pay attention because your life and your destiny is about to change. We want to especially honor those who have come from outside this city and outside this nation. It's always a joy to have you invest your time to worship with us. One guarantee we give you under God and by grace is that your life will never be the same. Amen and amen. We're honored tonight to have His Royal Majesty, the Olu of Wari. Let's give him a big, big hand clap. God bless you, sir. We appreciate your presence. We are a house of honor and those who are deserving of honor we will accord them the honor that is due and we thank you for your presence sir in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the Lord placed it in my heart to remind us of two things very quickly before we get into the ministry of the word there are two things that the Lord placed very strongly upon my heart to remind us of and once upon a time I shared with us here what God is making out of your life and my life it is important faith is vision dependent it is important you understand what God is making out of your life are we together this gives you the grace to stay, to be built. If you do not know what you are becoming in righteousness, if you do not know what you are becoming by grace, you will not be encouraged to continue. You will not be encouraged to remain. And I call it a koinonia believer. And the Lord impressed it upon my heart in the place of prayer to remind us again there are about six elements. This is what you are becoming as a believer under this grace number one you are becoming a spiritually vibrant believer this is the first thing you are becoming by reason of this immersion by reason of your submission to this apostleship this is what god is making out of your life a passionate believer who is in love with jesus and in love with the things of god it's important for you to know that when we take our time to invest in the atmosphere that is created per service per meeting it is to this intent it is our partnership with God that you become a spiritually vibrant believer number two to believe a be to become a believer who is a person a man or a woman of character you have to take note of that character with a growing determination to become like Jesus in all his ramifications a growing determination that even if you are not there yet you must have it at the back of your mind that week in week out sermon after sermon series after series prayer after prayer singing and worshiping after worship the goal is to mold you like the potter molding the clay that you become a believer who is full of the character of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Number three, God's intent, God's goal, God's vision for us all as believers under this ministry is to become intelligent and transformed believers. Transformation is a major component in all that we do intelligent and transformed believers believers whose minds have become word compliant believers who have a thorough understanding of the word of god alongside the dynamics of making that word work it's not enough to have a head knowledge a mental ascent of the word of god 
you must know how to translate the word of God from prophecy to its manifestation here and now. It's called the ministry of the word, not just the preaching of the word. The ministry of the word is a holistic capture, brings you to a point of enlightenment and helps you to see the point of application. It is the reason why our teachings are not vague. At the end of every discussion that happens upon this altar is a point of relevance and application. It is important for you to see how the thoughts, the words that you are learning, how they play out to making you a better believer and making you a more effective person. Are we learning? So your spiritual vibrancy, your character, Christ-like character, intelligence and transformed believer number four god's goal for us in making us become believers is that we become highly anointed and empowered believers it's important for you to pay attention to this god intends for you and i under this grace and by your discipline your sacrifice your consistency that you become a very anointed an empowered believer you are only a blessing to the degree to which you are empowered it takes beyond knowledge to create impact and to have your destiny come to fruition you need empowerment divine empowerment tarry ye in Jerusalem he said until ye be endued with power from on high number five what is God's goal for us as believers under this grace and of course I believe that this also represents his intention for believers world over number five to become responsible purpose-driven and effective believers responsible purpose-driven effective believers I am a strong advocate of responsible Christianity a faith practice that helps you to have a sense of destiny that you're not just serving God arbitrarily you are responsible you are purpose driven you know that God is going somewhere with you he says I know the thoughts that I think towards you Jeremiah 29 11 they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end God has an expected end and you must know that end scripture says he declares the end from the beginning every believer must have a sense of destiny a sense of destiny in Christ God is taking us somewhere as individuals families businesses and as a ministry number six the final intent behind this discipleship this mentorship this school of the Spirit is that God intends to produce out of us agents of societal and territorial transformation this is a very personal one because I think until recently most believers do not know or they do not think that they have a role to play as far as transforming territories and societies is concerned and I've taught you here in many series for that matter that the believer is called salt he is called light are we together he says we are the salt of the earth Matthew chapter 5 13 to 16 then he says we are the light of the world it's important for you to function as salt and to function as light that means you're praying in tongues your Bible study your character your studying scripture you're falling under the anointing and standing up must be translated to a context that serves Jesus to the betterment of society the Jesus you know the Jesus you've come to love must be able to be a blessing to all and sundry and this is not just to people of faith believers and unbelievers alike must see your impact in society the government the powers that be must come to reckon with the fact that your spirituality is an advantage to the civilization of your time it's unfortunate that in many Christian circles the government's perception of believers is that we are a bunch of fanatics who are a nuisance to advancement 
a nuisance to civilization but it ought not to be so you are the salt of the earth the assignment of salt is to preserve and to add value you are the light of the world we give illumination the Bible defines light as that which makes manifest the glory of God now so the first assignment I have tonight is to remind you that whilst you are seated listening to me or connected by way of the internet have it at the back of your mind that this is what Jesus is doing in my life that after a few weeks a few months one year two years three years you must be able to justify your submission to this grace using these indices so if someone asks you not outside and says tell me the benefit of your becoming part of this family if the only thing you say is i received a miracle you disappointed god me and all of us you must have intelligence enough to defend your stay why have you been here why do you come week in week out why do you listen to the messages why do you fast why do you pray then you can speak like a believer who has been properly mentored to this end my spiritual vibrancy are we together my transformation now that justifies your stay anyone who hears you speaking like that would want to join the kind of system that has produced this intelligence many believers are not matured and they do not intend to be matured because the system that molds and makes them is scattered and not methodical they don't know what they should become they just know that i can pray they just know that i can fast but the truths are not connected together to give them a sense of purpose and destiny you should leave your house every sunday or every other day you should click on any message with the intent that i am on this journey to becoming all this and even more spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Listen, let me tell you this The world cannot reject any believer who becomes this to any degree The world does not yet have the immunity to reject any believer who becomes spiritually vibrant a man or a woman of character a man or a woman intelligent and transformed a man or a woman highly anointed and empowered a man or a woman with a sense of purpose destiny and responsibility a man or a woman who is a contributor to national transformation it is impossible for any territory to indefinitely reject such a one. You can be misunderstood, you can be criticized, you can be envied. Unfortunately, it's the lot that comes with greatness. But one thing you cannot be denied is a chance to become a representation of God's glory within that territory. That one, no man can take it from you. Are we learning? So, if you truly desire greatness in Christ, you truly desire to bear fruit, that your life eventually becomes a manifestation of the glory of God, this is your course curriculum. If I were you, I will go and write this thing down and periodically during my retreat, I will use this as some of the indices that gauge my growth. You can know you are growing and you can know you are stunted many believers do not have a system of assessing their spiritual growth they cannot tell whether or not they are growing they think longevity in church equals to growth they think learning all the songs that are sung in church means growth they think learning bible verses necessarily mean growth no these are the irrefutable principles non-negotiable non-compromising standards if you want to become a voice a sound that speaks and to cause the nations to listen. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
that with every sermon, with every teaching, that includes that of tonight, that your heart be open to partner with God like a seed partners with the earth to become a giant oak tree. May you partner with God in this journey to becoming. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. My second assignment. Are you learning already? My second assignment is to review for the next two or three minutes something that I taught you some time ago that there are six foundational truths in your quest for knowledge. It is foolish to try to learn everything. No. God will not give man the burden to learn everything. Everything is not required for your greatness. There is an exact body of light. There is an exact, you know, sometimes um, for many people who are students, when you are preparing for exams, especially if the course is very vast, sometimes you can plead that the lecturer shows you mercy by showing you something called the area of concentration. You see, remember that? That means you say help us if you give us if you allow us to read everything from start to finish chances are excellent we may not be able to to you know cover grounds and sometimes the man can say okay focus on this focus on this focus on that there are many things to learn unfortunately most of them are useless as far as your knowing God representing his purposes and excelling is concerned just because knowledge is spiritual does not mean it is useful. That is the reason why the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. And that even in the presence of truth, you must be guided. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many believers who pride in knowledge that is useless before the situations that plague them. Knowledge that cannot reveal Jesus. Knowledge that cannot bless men. Knowledge that cannot improve your life. Knowledge that cannot promote the program of God. Is useless knowledge so in pressing for the knowledge that makes you mighty and victorious by the Spirit I was able to list for us foundationally listen no matter what you know in the Spirit if you do not know this that I'm about to review you will live a defeated life a life that will consistently misrepresent God can I run the list for you number one you must know God. This is the first thing I taught you, that in order of spiritual priority, as you explore spiritual knowledge in your quest to walk in victory and dominion, your first port of call is that you must know God through Jesus Christ. The way we know God is to learn Jesus. The Bible says, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Let me tell you the truth. Your confidence in life is predicated upon the God that you know. Are we together? If you know a weak God, you will manifest a weak destiny. If you know a lopsided God based on your perception, you will produce a lopsided destiny. You must know God. You must press to know Jesus. And I went further to teach you that in knowing God, there are three major areas we explore. Number one, we know God by studying his character. We know God by studying his character. You want to know God, you study his character. For instance, the entire Psalm 103, Psalm 103 is in my opinion, one of the most concise compendium of God's character. You can know God when you study his character. Number two, you know God when you study his ways, his modus operandi, his principles, the mysteries of the kingdom. We know God when we study his ways. It helps you to know how God behaves and it helps you to know how God does not behave. It helps you to understand how the kingdom was structured to operate. The third and final platform for knowing God is by learning his power. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 19 and to know the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe God wants us to know him by knowing his power 
something happens to you when you know how powerful God is it has the capacity to kill fear it has the capacity to erode unnecessary concerns when you know who God is and the power that was invested in raising Christ from the dead the power that took him from Hades to the earth took him from the earth to the throne that same power can take you from any level to any level are we learning number two the second foundational knowledge all believers must have as far as building your knowledge bank for a victorious life is concerned is that number two you must know yourself in light of who Christ is this sounds very elementary but this is profound get ready to live a frustrated life if you do not know yourself in light of who Christ is our world today has suffered and sadly continues to suffer a cancer of identity crisis champions acting like chickens warriors acting like weak men Gideons hiding not knowing that they have the destinies of warriors that they have the capacity to lead an army something happens to you when you learn yourself not just from a sociological standpoint not just from an anthropological standpoint you learn yourself in light of who Christ is because when we know him we were created in his image so you learn him to know yourself you don't investigate yourself to know yourself no the new man is a reflection of who Christ is so you learn Christ to know who you are or who you should be many believers do not know who they are number three the third foundational knowledge that you need in order to live an excelling and a victorious life is that you must know your place in destiny and God's prophetic program. I wish I could spend all night talking about this. You must know if you know God through Jesus Christ, you know yourself in light of who Christ is, your next assignment in terms of foundational knowledge if you desire a life that excels is that you must know first and foremost that you have a place in destiny even if you don't know what that place is have it at the back of your mind brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen that you have a role to play that means you are not just a number among the eight billion plus people roaming around the earth it is revealing it is healing to know that i count in destiny i count in god's program hallelujah you must know that you have a place then you must go further to know that place know your place in life and destiny something happens to an individual the moment you find your place of purpose your place in destiny the young boy jeremiah had a conversation with god in chapter 1 and verse 5 and the Lord was revealing to him his destiny and he says before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations so if you ask Jeremiah who are you he would say by my divine mandate I have been called to be a prophet to the nation it doesn't matter who believed the vision or who did not believe the vision coming from the lips of God he says lo I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book I have to convince you that your academics is not why you live it is only a passage to equip you so that you are equipped for life and destiny I need to convince you are we together that secular knowledge or your career as it were is not necessarily your assignment it can be part of your assignment it is your responsibility to work with the spirit of grace under a structured mentorship platform like this to find your place in destiny if you do not find your place in destiny you will live a life of anger hatred annoyance because you will watch people making progress in destiny they will derive a joy you do not know where it's coming from our world is full of frustrated people today who are just growing old they wake up in the morning they sleep late at night to eat the bread of sorrow 
there is nothing that is exciting about their living ask them what is your project at this point at best they'll say i'm looking for money 10 years later i'm still on that project age 50 i'm still on that project 80 years i'm too old to continue the project and they die a very frustrated life an intelligent god will not take the time to invest in building an individual who lives a wasted life here is the trajectory of the life of the average person you are born struggle your way through teenage begin to explore life and if you are fortunate to have good parents or a good system of guidance you will escape many regrets if you are not fortunate you begin to write a nasty story that sometimes you may spend the rest of your life regretting a few years later you attain 18 society calls you an adult and you begin sometimes a clueless journey into adulthood then marriage comes in then children come in you are confused they join you in that confusion and then if you are fortunate to have a career it may give you some sense of destiny until trouble strikes until spirit strike and then you continue that way adding age upon age and then when you get to 50 golden jubilee they call it midlife crisis all kinds of troubles begin to ferment themselves largely as a result of your not knowing how God designed life to work I hope I did not describe you I hope I am not describing where you are going to because that is a very 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 mediocre life doesn't give God glory there is no dignity in living such a life an intelligent God loves you more than that there is a path that leads to excellence life can be worth living when you understand that you count in God's program you believe that shout a loud amen. amen can you believe I'm still on my review number four when you know God when you know you when you know your place the next thing to know is to go through the sacrifice of understanding the principles of the kingdom you must understand the mysteries of the kingdom it's a non-negotiable pursuit because the life you have received in Christ is knowledge activated the life you have received in Christ is not intention activated is not wish activated is not assumption activated there is an exact knowledge like a switch that turns on light in every area of your life the assignment of a teaching priest is to make that journey easy for you not to replace your pursuit and sacrifice but to bring before you the mysteries are located for an excelling life you must know the principles of the kingdom job 38 verse 33 niv knowest thou the laws of the heavens it says canst thou set the dominion upon the earth your life is at the mercy of the mysteries of the kingdom that you know look up and let me give you a few of the mysteries one for instance is called the law of encounter that it is the people that do know their god who shall be strong and shall prosper another for instance is called the law of faith that the just in this kingdom lives by faith how about the law of honor that every door that closes closes because of dishonor dishonor to God to men and to laws how about the law of relationships that be fruitful means be relational I'm showing you some mysteries you have to learn how about the excellency of prayer that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint how about the power of vision and its ability to evolve you to a realm where your life becomes undeniable which of these do you not know it is it is it is unfortunate to assume that you will magically enter a great destiny in ignorance nobody wins the olympic by mistake mastery is responsible for accuracy is responsible for greatness at any level he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully make it as a project this year to damage ignorance from your life damage ignorance fight it like you fight Satan there is something I do not know about relationships 
that is keeping my life stunted. Do you know, not knowing the law of honor alone can keep backtracking your years. Because the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. How about knowing the power of words, its ability to shape your destiny, that where the word of a king is, there is power, and that if you are the redeemed of the Lord, you don't just wish so, you say so. Not knowing how to speak correctly, it says, say not before an angel, I made a mistake. There are many people who are masters of careless speakings. They have programmed disaster over their lives. Self-inflicted problems. They change themselves by themselves. Words. How about the awareness that God is able to restore as a principle? My God, if you do not know, for instance, that the unit of destiny is time, you will not pay attention to time. You will allow your life waste away and not care. How about when you discover that time has gone? Are you aware that there is speed in the kingdom? Are you aware that there is restoration? Are you aware of the mercy of God? If you are aware, do you know how to activate it? Because the mercy of God does not work for everybody. The mercy of God only works for the broken and the contrite. If you are not broken, the mercy of God cannot be administered to you. You know, sometimes I look at believers and sincerely, without a sense of pride, I feel burdened in my heart because I begin to wonder, when are they going to learn these things? When? When are you going to learn these things? You cannot become great if you do not know these things. Believe me when I tell you. It's not an issue of one day go better. That is absolute nonsense. You program yourself into an excelling life. You arise and shine because your light comes. I'm praying for somebody here. You have lived a life guessing your life, maybe arrogantly so. May God begin to structure your spiritual understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. That all these blame games about life and destiny, you will take responsibility once and for all. It is, listen, can I tell you, the best time was yesterday, but the next best time is now. If you missed out on yesterday, don't use the remaining time complaining. Reinvent yourself and begin the journey. It is never late for a starter. If you start, there is honor in starting. It says now is the day of salvation. You may have missed it 10 years ago, but you can still start. And in God's economy, he can show you mercy. Are you learning? I told you something that when God wants to show you mercy, he brings you under a grace that can help you and teach you. There are many people who would otherwise not hear this truth. You can see the difference like light and darkness. The mysteries of the kingdom. Next foundational truth you need to know. Number five. This is a very important one. You must understand man, my goodness, my God. Lord, help me say this the right way. You must understand man. Man in all his dimensions. You will be a loser in life if you do not understand men. It's not an insult. It's just a harsh description to force your mind to believe me. You will be a loser in life if you do not understand how to work with men in this cosmos. There is a spiritual component to men. There is a psychological component to men. There is a sociological component to men. There are things if you do not know about men, you will be angry for the rest of your life. There are things if you do not know about men, you will keep recycling scenarios of pain and disappointment and heartbreaks. You must know men. Your prosperity comes from God through the hands of men. And if you don't know how to receive it, every attack you will ever experience in your life will have to be routed through man. Don't ignore men. Are we together? If you do not understand man as the zenith of God's creation, 
please look at me you know I was meditating earlier on on what I was going to share and when I came to this point I started laughing by myself I took a deep breath and I said my God how many people for instance just an example if I ask you what business do you do you will answer this way I do oil and gas am I right on that or I have a shop I have a mall do you know that economically speaking you are right but from a standpoint of higher spiritual wisdom you are wrong there is nobody who does the business of things everything in life is the business of men oil only has its value because men place value on it your shop only has customers because men have chosen the day men cease to place value on what you do it becomes valueless once upon a time value from men was placed on a typewriter and whoever owned it or could use it was termed valuable but because men refused to place value they graduated their value to something else today typewriter looks like a monument don't just say I am valuable I hope men have a demand for the value you have the entire business of everything including salvation is the business of men do not ignore men you will fail woefully so are we together Spirit break out Break our walls down That's what God is doing already Deconstructing negative beliefs Bringing you to a point where some of you Especially those who were not here when I taught this God is showing you your life in a mirror And you are seeing very clearly If I continue this way Trouble is waiting for me It's not about prophesying negative this immediately will bring you to a point where you take the position of a student and you realize that I have to be serious. If I'm not serious, what my father cried about, I'm about to cry about. What my mother cried about, I'm about to cry about. You must understand man. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? Business is run because of men, not just ideas. Ideas only have their value because men make them valuable. If men reject those ideas, they become obsolete. Nonsense will have meaning when men accord it value. Are we together? Wisdom can be called foolishness if men reject it. Everything revolves around the economy of men. If you know this, you will be wealthy. If you know this, you will be great. It was the business of men that brought Jesus to the earth. Restoring all things and restoring creation but ultimately restoring man men were so important that even in their degenerated state God still chose to walk on them and bring them back don't ignore men you will pay a very dear price it is in the multitude of men the Bible says that the Kings honor lie can I give you the last one number six someone say thank God for koinonia for someone this is a bailout system for you Mama cried and said, Lord, I don't know the way out, but help my son. And God brought you here to show you the way out. You can return back and say, Mama, God has answered the prayer. Finally, your son is not a weak person like Gideon. He has become a person of stature, even by light. Six, the sixth and final foundational knowledge you must have to live an excelling life is that you must know your adversary, the devil. I wish you didn't have to know Satan. It would have been a lighter burden, but he's been here to stay for a long time. It's important to know him because of the destructive tendencies that come with that spirit called Satan. The Bible calls him the thief. The Bible calls him an adversary. Never calls him a friend. The word Satan means deceiver, manipulator. Satan is not just the name of a spirit being. It is a generic name given to a class of spirits. They are called devils. Accusers. Deceivers. They thwart the purposes of God over the lives of the saints. Please look at me. Satan will kill anything he can kill. Will steal anything he can steal. 
will destroy anything he can destroy. When you leave Satan unattended to, I assure you, even if in ignorance, he will not spare. If Satan did not spare a newborn baby and made sure that children died because a child of destiny was born, you will be joking to believe there is no compassion. The language mercy does not exist in the dark kingdom. And so from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom suffered violent. It would take the spiritually violent to take their portion in life and destiny by force. Your ministry will not rise just because you are kind. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in all your works. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Apostle, do you think Satan is on my case? Yes, sir. By the integrity of scripture. Do you think he plans to kill me? In a hurry, now that you are even here. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Always. Thanks be to God. The confidence of the believer is upon that which is written. But Satan will kill anything he can kill. Like some of you allowed him and he's wrecking your business now. But thank God you came tonight. Because every time light comes, darkness must bow. Are we together? Are you ready to pray a prayer? And then I get into the main course tonight. Pray a prayer in one minute. Open my eyes to see. Everyone pray, please. Online pray. Something is about to happen to your life in a very defining way. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appears before the Lord even in Zion. I assure you tonight you will never be the same. Something is about to come from heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Koinonia, tonight I want to share with you a very powerful secret. I came tonight to give you a gift. It's a gift from heaven. It's a gift that has made men mighty. It's a gift that has made men strong. Everyone who is following online, I want you to gather everyone you can find and tell them to sit around your phones, your screens, every man of God you can find, every leader you can find, every business person you can find, every weary and struggling person you can find. The Spirit of God is about to speak. You're about to hear something tonight that will really change your life. It has been an anchor in my life and I'm honored to be sharing it. Light is about to come. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, rest on me. Oh, oh rest on me. Fasten your seat belts. Let's get to work. Tonight, I'm teaching on the staying power. I want to show you how to access the grace that outlasts. The grace that makes men consistent 
is a very profound revelation you are about to hear the staying power the power that causes men to remain hmm. the grace that causes men to continue are you ready Joshua 14 from verse 6 Koinonia you are a blessed people honestly honestly I want you to believe me you are a blessed people then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal my teaching begins now and Caleb the son of Jethuneth the Kenizzite said unto him thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses the man of God concerning me and thee next verse verse 7 40 years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me to Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land and I brought him word again as it was in my heart uh-huh verse 8 nevertheless my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt talking about the other spies remember the 12 spies so he was making reference to that but I wholly followed the Lord my God verse 9 we're reading to 12 and Moses swear on that day so Caleb is reminding Joshua and the people now saying surely the land where on thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever because thou hast wholly followed the Lord thy God verse 10 hallelujah and now behold the Lord hath kept me alive and as he said these forty and five years and ever since the Lord spake his word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness and now lo I am this day four score and eighty-five years I mean and four score and five years that's eighty-five years read eleven if you are a believer one to read as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me as my strength was then even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come in the staying power <laughs> men do not just last men do not just remain there is a grace that God gives men that can cause men to outlast outlast storms outlast seasons outlast adversities outlast any kind of thing whatsoever the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 Hebrews 6 and verse 15 it says and after Abraham had patiently endured patiently endured he obtained the promise I want to show you tonight the mystery of consistency in anything you are doing it is the mystery that many of our fathers have known it is the mystery that many enviable leaders even in the secular have mastered in a way when you see a man remain when you see a man still vibrant full of vision full of power full of grace when you see that people's focus and determination does not go down there is a grace that is responsible for that are we together impact can be short-lived so says the story of Samson impact can be short-lived so says the testament about the Nazarenes that it is possible for a man to start strong in ministry in business in life and destiny and then for whatever reason factors you'll be learning tonight that it seems like it is a limitation in all men and with all men to gas out to plateau to be weary to be tired it is not unusual for men to be tired because of the vicissitudes that surround their journey to becoming their journey to destiny even Jesus on his journey to being the lamb that will be slain for us he became weary he became tired he became fatigued and the Bible did not hide his frustration he cried at Gethsemane 
In fact, a man had to help him call Simon of Cyrene for him to die on the cross. Men can be weary. Visions can fade just like a man's eyes. The Bible tells us a time came. E Eli was once a vibrant priest, but something happened in his life. And Eli's eyes began to dim. And it's so dim that Eli eventually, on hearing that the ark of God had been captured and his sons had been dead, the Bible says he fell, broke his neck and died. Longevity of impact is based on a grace called the staying power. There is a grace that when a man accesses, you can remain in ministry. You can remain in destiny. That the storms of life can arise and fall. Men and systems can change. Governments can change. This man called Daniel was a very mysterious man because he had such a grace. That Daniel outlasted almost everyone, the advers the kings and all the adversities that were the men who were together fighting the purposes of God over his life. The staying power was a grace that the nation of Israel had in Egypt that they survived 430 years and even though many things happened of that generation that came out only Joshua and Caleb got into the promised land but how many of you know that because of the grace that was upon them they were people who had been enslaved for many years but nothing failed to disperse them indefinitely there was always a way that they gathered back like the hen gathering her chicks the staying power is one of the mysterious provisions by the spirit of god that can empower men and grace men to last that when the vicissitudes of life the challenges of life they rise and fall at the end of it when the dust is settled you are still standing the bible says haven't done all to stand stand if you do not have this grace your company will not last your ministry will not last do you know that there are territories that swallow up the inhabitants there are companies that start in fact statistics will tell us i hope i'm still right on that that at least 80 to 90 percent of companies and corporations that start die within the first year it is not necessarily because they lack ideas or even the technical know-how and this is also true for ministries my goodness i have been part of by the privilege of god's grace being a strong encouragement for even men and women in the gospel i have seen the mighty cry i have seen the mighty join the weak to cry I have seen kings cry, nobles cry, leaders cry. Because life can do its thing to men. And if you do not know how to stay, I've seen couples cry. I've seen parents cry. I've seen children cry. I've seen great people cry. When it has to do with weariness, it is an equalizer. Both the rich and poor experience it. Both the anointed and those who are otherwise experience it. What you are learning tonight will equip you to last. That decades after now, when the storms of life and destiny shift and do their thing, you will be standing as robust as a palm tree. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Can I tell you, it is better to not start the journey to life and destiny than to become a story that is a memorial, a memorial of failure. That someday people will say there was once a company called ABC. There was once a man of God called ABC. And for the simple reason that you did not have the energy to continue. I did a bit of athletics before. And I did long distance race for a few years. It started as a punishment. And then we later discovered there was a grace there. So the Bible says all things work together. <laughs> Are we together? Yes, it started as a punishment. And then we found out that there was a grace. So we started doing, circling the field seven times, sometimes 12 times, you know, like a marathon. And God granted me grace for whatever reason. I seem to be able to do that very effectively. I would run, you would think I'm tired, but I will continue. And I watch people, usually we are many when we're about to start. Many, including those who know they will not finish. 
and the moment they say start we begin to run and there are others who begin to run in front they clap for them too early they start clapping and they are encouraged flattered then discouraged then they gas out and then some of them fall like packs of cars after two or three rounds you see people literally you know how an asthmatic patient gas for breath some will just stop and say it's not worth it what am i going to get several excuses begin to happen i remember the first time it was myself and another gentleman who was a senior and we ran and at a point we were running together and that was when our master looked at us and he said wow so it means that we can incorporate this in the sports of the school and they started incorporating it listen let me tell you the truth the skill you used to start is not what you used to remain did you hear what i said the dynamics of starting anything, usually the basic level, entry level of any kind of knowledge and skill and motivation is sufficient to start. But when you see people last and outlast, there are other elements that were incorporated on their way. And this is what I want to teach you tonight. Hallelujah. Many have aborted life and destiny because they knew how to start, but they did not know how to remain. The stamina that keeps the great great, regardless what happens. The stamina that keeps the vibrant vibrant. The stamina that keeps the prayerful prayerful. The stamina that keeps the wise wise. The stamina that keeps visionaries visionaries, regardless what happens. This is what you are learning tonight. It is called the staying power. For someone you are receiving that, to jack your company, your spiritual life, your ministry, your business back to life. You prayed and God answered with this sermon tonight. So pay attention as you learn. Hear this. Men are as powerful as the God that backs them. Men are as powerful as the mysteries that surround them. Men are as powerful as the God that backs them. Men are as powerful as the mysteries, the bodies of spiritual knowledge that supports and surrounds them. And I've put together tonight by the Spirit of God five keys that I have learned from Scripture. I have learned through the privilege of mentorship of people with structured, consistent results. And by the privilege of God's grace, some of these have been principles that I've incorporated in my own life and I know it works. Is a man of God ready tonight? Is a businessman ready to listen tonight? Is a champion ready tonight? Someone determined to last and remain. If you are ready, shout a loud amen. amen. Key number one. Those who have the grace that lasts and outlasts, outlasts challenges, outlasts seasons. By the way, the word at last, if you care to find out the meaning, the word at last means to continue to exist in spite of. To continue to exist in spite of. It means to remain active. It means to remain active. It means to last longer than things, opponents, and conditions. I'll take it one more time. To outlast means to continue to exist in spite of. To outlast means to remain active. To outlast means to last longer, longer than things, longer than opponents, longer than conditions, usually unfavorable. This is what it means to outlast. And very quickly, without further ado, I want to give you five keys that will grant anyone the grace and the empowerment. And at the end of my teaching, by the privilege of God's grace, someone will carry that grace bodily tonight. In the name of Jesus, a weary person will come back full of faith. You will learn a lot. Wisdom will be imparted upon you from the throne. Are you ready? Number one, the first key that has helped me has helped any great person I know is to be strong in the Lord. 
write it down the first key that helps men to stay to last and to outlast is to be strong in the Lord the strength that is derived from your knowing God there is a stamina and strength that is derived from knowing God Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 popular scripture it says finally brethren be strong I like amplified give it to us please amplified says finally be strong in the Lord it says be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides show me a champion who has remained show me a great trailblazer a destiny changer who has remained I show you a man especially in the kingdom who has mastered how to be strong in the Lord write this your confidence in life will be on the strength of your knowledge of God your confidence in life will be on the strength of your knowledge of God your confidence in life that includes every endeavor you are part of will be on the strength of your knowledge of God second Timothy 1 12 second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12 please the Bible says for the which cause I also suffer these things nevertheless I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed hallelujah and I am persuaded say persuaded one more time say persuaded I am persuaded that he is able his ability was derived from my knowing him that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him I have taught you here koinonia that God does not keep what you have he keeps what you commit to him the bank does not keep the money in your house they keep the money you deposit as a trust in the account am I right on that if you have one million and you keep it in your house and it is stolen and you blame the bank you see that now the court will charge you for fraud because they are not entitled to keep anything outside of their jurisdiction so God cannot protect a destiny that is not handed over to him if you trust him enough trust him with your life if you trust him enough trust him with your destiny if you trust him enough trust him even with your days they looked unto him and their faces were lightened there is no shame when we trust in the Lord the Bible even says with all our hearts we should trust him and it says to lean not unto our own understanding it says in all your ways Proverbs 3 5 to 7 acknowledge him and he shall direct your path next verse says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the Lord and depart from evil be strong in the Lord please look at me a time will come when the only true ally in your life will be God did you hear what I said a time will come when the most trusted ally in your life will be God some trust in horses some trust in chariots how many of you know that horses and chariots are a warrior's ally he needs them to be efficient in war but he says some trust but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God early enough you must learn that the greatest security in your life the longevity factor in this ministry your ministry destiny your family your business is God himself and if you allow your knowledge of God to suffer because you are pursuing any other thing you will learn painfully with time that you made a bad bargain with destiny are we together be strong in the Lord first two words be strong it takes strength to continue the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it says your strength is small if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small Caleb spoke in Joshua chapter 14 and verse 11 he said as I was can you imagine by what technology it's not a natural thing he says I am yet as strong this day as I was when Moses sent me 40 years down the line the guy said I am still strong for war 
I am still strong to go in and I'm still strong to go out I made a joke some time ago that many leaders are usually eager to serve not just to serve nations to serve companies I've prayed for many people at their retirement or when maybe another director takes over and usually I am shocked to see that the zeal that they had when they began that adventure usually diminishes sometimes almost to zero at the point of retirement I've seen people clamor for positions and titles and at the point where the reality of that office beats on them when they're about to retire they retire in a hurry they said director can we shift your retirement by two weeks they say no way I will retire now because they are tired of all the troubles something happens to men when they stay long enough with men they almost choose to quit it takes a man who knows God to remain in the world of men let me repeat this again it takes a man who knows God to remain in the world of men the stories and the episodes of pain betrayal anger and a mix of all the humanities of men is sufficient to to blow your vision deflate your passion erode your appetite and your energy it takes a man who knows God to have the stamina to continue in this world of men be strong in the Lord be strong in the Lord what happens to a pastor when he loses say his wife or his child at that point you need beyond masculinity at that point is beyond brain work there are things that can befall men in life that makes you to wish death have you seen people commit suicide in our world do you think it's that easy to kill yourself don't try it are we together but our world is full of people who jumped into lagoons and made certain statements others recorded themselves world this is to let you know where I'm about to die I am tired I'm 35 45 nothing is working and they jump in and you would think they are playing until you find them dead a man's spirit can be so broken that death looks like gain a man's spirit can be so broken that by yourself you will want to kill yourself hallelujah many years ago I had the honor of praying for someone who had an accident and it's not a picture I want to paint for you that person was so broken like for the rest of his or her life he will not be able to walk I mean anywhere you can find bone was broken how the person was alive I remember talking to the person and the man true story the man said I wish for death I'm already saved why will I live like this being a burden to my wife being a burden to my children people have left jobs to take care of me they have left everything it's unfair to them that was his he cried with his tears he said at least if I die I know I'm going to heaven and all the monies that are spent on me can be used for something else can I tell you people can go through things in life that makes them pray by themselves for death this is life for you you need to be strong in the Lord Moses you are about to lead God's people into the promised land you have no idea the Hittites the Perizzites the Jebusites and all the people the forces that you'll be contending with so he told Joshua like he told Moses be strong remember he said it before the journey when God tells you be strong he means he's talking to a warrior are we together be strong be strong it takes strength to remain there are people today who became great and they started the journeys of their lives with no father and no mother but they became strong they said listen I may not be able to do anything about my life daddy died mommy died sisters died no siblings no support but for as long as I have breath within me I will take a step of faith and some of them went to go and write jam by themselves they went to gain admission by themselves all they had was money enough to get into the school some of them today are company owners it takes strength to do anything in life 
giving flimsy excuses and blaming yesterday and men is the lot of weak people you need to be strong first in the Lord someone prophesy to yourself say be strong mean what you are saying one more time say be strong be strong means I know that things have happened around your life that is unfavorable but rest in the fact that there is a God who can save men are we together now be strong in ministry you started ministry and after 10 years there are only two members be strong be strong you have a problem right now with your rent embarrassment is imminent be strong one thing I can tell you about life is that it passes. Life is not static. Life moves. And if you have the endurance, that scene will change. It's like the pages of a book. It will take time to open. It's like the hand of a clock. Have you seen a clock with a battery that stays? It moves. It may move slow, but the same distance that our hand is moving is what the minute and the second is moving. It's just that your attention is on the hour hand. That's why it looks slow. Everything in life will come to pass be strong there are men who do not have the stamina to look on to Jesus and to be strong who would ever believe that upon this earth today according to the authority of scripture that a flood once covered the earth and there was no land and there were only eight people you would think the earth will never have land again Look at the world today. Nothing is as dangerous, as powerful, as threatening as it initially looks. I have taught you that life always comes with its challenges in a magnified form. It takes stamina to deflate it to its right size and then defeat it by understanding. Someone prophesied, be strong. You are not the first to look for a house rent. Please, it's not a unique attack to you. You are not the first to struggle with a child. I know that there are parents who are struggling with autistic children and let me tell you the truth it is a very difficult thing I have witnessed for myself there are people struggling with all kinds of cases and whilst they pray every day the situation seems to deteriorate the staying power is derived from the ability to know God and to draw strength from him I know God I may not know the director in that company but I know God I may not know the president the owner of the oil and gas company but I know God and my Bible says the people that know their God even though they are weak it said they shall be strong someone say be strong that police case will come to pass be strong that issue with your relatives be strong I know that you are the first son now out of 12 children and you don't even have a job you don't know how to take care of the remaining hey be strong crying does not solve the problem be strong you need to shut your door and prophesy to yourself be strong let me tell you the truth behind every exploit you see until men tell you their challenges and take off their destiny clothes for you to see the scar you usually will focus on the crown alone there is no champion who did not weary seasons through their courage. Be strong. It's not unique to you. Hmm. Yes, sir. You know, most times when God speaks to you about destiny, he speaks as if everything will happen overnight. He spoke to you, I have raised you to be an apostle and a prophet. And you thought you would just, a partner would just come and give you one billion. Open a church for you and put your, your picture everywhere think again you now know why pastors cry during pastors conference members just keep laughing but you see a pastor sitting like this he's not writing while the sermon is going on and you will see from a man tears coming the tears are doing the writing they could relate like some of you are too innocent to relate with this teaching tonight but there are some of you who know that you are in the middle of a season right now if you are not strong you will give up Men do not last because all seasons were to their favor. They stayed until dry season became rainy season. Every farmer knows that. It is frustrating to patiently wait, as we call it in Africa and in Nigeria, for dry season. Dry season comes with unusual heat. It comes with a lot of things. Right now it's very, very hot. Very, very hot. You know, many times I travel, when I return, I have to adjust to the temperature. It can be very inconveniencing. As soon as you land Nigeria, you just know you are home. 
Many things, not through the signboard, you know you are home. Ah, and you have to invent a skill to manage that because it will not change because of you. Champions know that seasons will change. It may not change as fast as you want it. So you invent a skill. Skill number one is to look unto him. Every time you are confused about life, stop looking down. Look up. Looking up is a skill that only champions know. Did you hear what I said? Every time someone tells you, provided I'm in this office, you will never be promoted. Go back home and sit down. Then your wife says, what kind of a man are you? There's no food for the children. And sometimes the devil says, get a knife quickly. Kill yourself and rest. Look up. Look up. Be strong in the Lord. There are times you will do everything right. It is not just your season of appearing. There is nothing at all that you did wrong. You kept the principles. What God says to do is what you have done. All that is left is to stand. Haven't done all. Stand. Stand. You called for the program and only five people came. And somebody told you, go and look for a job quickly. Because if it's this ministry, you are not called. Uh -uh. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. I hope it's Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to I remember many years ago, we lost one of our precious daughters in this house. Wonderful lady, she was a leader. And I traveled down to go and see the people to comfort them. I was so sad about what happened. I went for a retreat for three days. I said, Lord, how did this happen that you did not show me? How did, it, did I sin against you? Is something wrong with my spiritual life? Have I backslidden? What happened to my eyes that I did not see this? And afterwards, I drew comfort in scripture. And when I went, we met her mother. You know how it is to enter a house where someone is bereaved? And the woman kept encouraging us. She was the one who became the preacher. The woman who lost her daughter. Come on, I said, this is stamina. Look, it is a powerful thing. In the midst of storms, that is when you will see strength from within. How do you lose your precious daughter, an architect? Wonderful lady, great destiny. And you would think the mother would be crying and shedding tears and saying all of you men of God, you mean you couldn't see this? And she was the one telling us to be strong. I left that place. I said, there are people who, something happens to you when you know God. You can sit in the midst of fire and be teaching people how to survive. You are in the midst of fire. You don't even focus on your own fire. You have gained mastery over storms. The staying power is derived from knowing God. There is something about your knowledge of God that gives you the strength. The three Hebrew boys said, O king, I hope you know that fire was not a parable. Has a gas cooker burnt you before? Or stove or electric stove or anything? It can burn you and the scar can remain there for days. Here is a king who is about to throw Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in fire. And they said, oh king, our God will save us. But that even if he does not save us, we build capacity already. We have come too far with him. How do you go back? Generals, don't go back. Even if it's at the instance they die with honor in battle. They don't run away. In the military, you are charged when you run away from battle. No, civilians do that. Warriors stand and they face with valiancy until they win. Until they win. Until they win. Until they win. You can worry that financial problem. You can worry that health problem. When you look like a victim, it will help you make you... Take away that victim mentality. God does not raise victims. He raises victors. You may not see the end but find strength. Those who last are people who are full of, hold on, 
not assumed courage, not pretentious courage, not bold face. No, the righteous as bold as a lion. I wish I would tell you ministry was always like this. I would be lying. There were seasons that required stamina. There are times in your life where nothing physical can help encourage you that you have a great tomorrow. The only thing you hold on to is God said. And unfortunately, you are the only one who had him. So you cannot even tell your wife God said. Abraham, you had God alone. What are you going to do with Sarah? What are you going to do with your mighty men? It is very frustrating when you are the only one who had God alone. When there is no company to say we had God. There was a time when the Bible says God said to them, separate me. All of them had it. So there was no conflict. But when you are the only one who has had God, I'm sending you to America. I'm sending you to UK. I'm sending you to Abuja. And you had him. You know the word of God is there for you. Let me tell you, it is difficult when you do not have proof that back your convictions yet. You do not have a way to defend yourself. Only time and God can make that defense happen. At such times, you need the staying power. Staying power. Staying power. Staying power. God is speaking to someone today. Yo, you are still the prophet. No doubt about it. You are still the apostle. You are still the prayer warrior. You are still that destiny changer. The only lady God took out of a family of 10 people. You think he's playing with you? An old song we used to sing says, God did not bring us out this far to take us back again. That he brought us out to take us into. God does not bring men to take them back. You can run back, but warriors stand and they remain. When the nation of Israel wanted to run, David said, no, it's not in our culture to retreat. Please listen. I'm showing you how to be strengthened. Be strong in the Lord. Hear me. This is why, young lady, God is telling you, invest in your spiritual life now before you get married. You don't know the challenges that will befall you. At that point, it's not a beautiful lady who will fight the challenges. It's a woman who knows God. Know God now that you are a student. Know God now before you become a director in that company. Know God now. Knowing God is an advantage. You cannot survive the days that your destiny would capture if you don't know God. Man of God, know God before the sick come. Know God before challenges in ministry comes. Know God before criticisms come. Know God before naysayers know you. Know God. If you do not know God, you will fall like a pack of cards and waste your Christian testimony. But the people that do know their God. Listen, I tell you sincerely, and may God forgive me if I'm lying. Even if this ministry never became global and became what God has made it by grace, I will still stand. It's not about today's result. The conviction is greater than the results. The result came because of the conviction. Apostle Mayon is a financial problem. I'm in trouble of billions right now. Please find rest. There are people who had problems, billions of dollars, and they are out today. You see, one of the things that makes generals in the kingdom is their scars. Make reference to my teaching lessons from an overcomer. There are certain fears some people don't fear again. There is a way a tenant can suffer and suffer and suffer. If you say, I'm calling a police, you call him. You don't know how many times I've gone to the prison. There are times that I taught you that one of the ways God gives you courage is to bring you face to face with your fears. You will stand in front of it long enough and see that it's a dog without tooth. It had no power. It only threatened your immaturity. When you become strong, there are many things you can face beyond what you think you can. Who is God speaking to? They looked unto him. Please hear me. Whatever price you can pay to know God, it is an advantage and will remain an advantage for the years to come. 
There are things by the privilege of God's grace, if I did not know about God today, I probably would not have had the grace to continue. The staying power is derived. Is derived from number one, your knowledge of God. Can we continue? Please be seated. Koinonia for you. Be strong in the Lord. Man of God, be strong. Businessman, be strong. Family man, be strong. It will end up in praise. Your confidence in life will be tied to the revelation of the God that you know. There are times no man will be able to answer the question you are asking. Only the one who created the heavens and the earth. Why did my brother die? Why did my sister die? Why did my company fold? Why is the ministry not advancing? Again, I make reference to God's servant who said one time the church that today has become a global phenomenon was not growing. And he called on a few brethren and they went into prayer and fasting. And whilst they were praying, according to him, that the Lord asked him to step out and answered him, showed him a dark layer of cloud and said, this is a dark layer misrepresenting your ministry. And he was asked to curse it and then he printed the posters and said, come and see. And that was the beginning of a journey today that has inspired millions across the globe. Can I tell you the truth? Every champion is a champion because of what he overcame. Two, what is the second key that controls consistency, longevity of impact, the ability to stay and weary the storms of life until you emerge? Are you ready? You want to pay attention to this right now. Submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over your life. Write it down, please. Submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over your life. One more time. Submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over your life in any and all matters. I want to teach you something that has destroyed many people now. Please lend me your attention. To buttress on the point I'm about to make, please make reference to my teaching, knowing God accurately. One more time, knowing God accurately. It is a risk. It is dangerous. Let me just read out what I wrote here, then I explain. It is dangerous to build your life and your destiny on any other factor or foundation aside the word of God. Please listen. It is dangerous to build your life on any other factor or foundation aside the word of God. Factors like human philosophies, factors like intellect, even factors like visionary encounters. Hmm. Point two, you want to stay, to last, to remain, to outdo, to outlast. Submit to the supremacy of the word as final authority over any and all matters. And I said, it is dangerous to build your life on any other factor. Please look up. Any other foundation and any other factor. I have met many people in my life whose lives continue to plunge and decline, degrade, and the basis of their exploring life is visions and dreams. And you know, by the privilege of God's grace, this is a ministry with a rich heritage of supernatural encounters visionary encounters and the manifestation of the gift of the spirit so i'm in no way downplaying the gifts of the spirit but i have watched gifts fail people i have watched people live on visions that have never come to pass and will never come to pass because they exalted visionary experiences above the word of god i have seen people say god said and nothing in their life shows that god said when you exalt human philosophies when you exalt intellect, 
For many believers, Satan has cheated us because he has made us too emotionally connected to visions and prophecies. And I'm not against that, not at all. The Bible already says to despise not prophesying. But can I tell you, heaven and earth will pass away, the Bible says, but only the word of God abides forever. Show me a man who never has a vision in his life. Show me a man who never has an opportunity for some out-of-body experience, but he can find what is written and stake his destiny at it. I show you a champion who will emerge and remain. Kenneth E. Hagen of blessed memory, in one of his teachings, he made a statement, if I recall, that when the move of God started within their generation, it was a season of outpouring and many ministers of the gospel, you know, they caught that fire. But he made an observation according to him that most of them exalted gifts, supernatural experiences above the word of God. And according to him, he cautioned them. Many of them built their ministries based on visions, what they saw, and he told them they would not last. And many, many of them, in spite of the excellency of their encounters, they eventually fell like a pack of cards. I can tell you, the reason why Koinonia is standing today is not because I saw Jesus, necessarily. The reason why Koinonia is standing today is not because of my encounters with angels and spirits. The reason why Koinonia is found, is, is standing today is because we have opened the book and we have found where longevity is connected. You see that now? Don't run your life based on visions. No. Let visions be a support system for the word. Let prophecy be a support system for the word. You cannot get up and just move from Lagos to Abuja simply because you had a dream and you saw that you moved from Lagos to Abuja. It may be genuine, it may be God speaking, but it's still a risk. Because the margin of error, visionary encounters depend on your level of transformation. They depend on your perception. The, the, the variables are many. Two scriptures to encourage you. Is someone learning tonight? Psalm 12, 6 to 7. Psalm 12. The words of the Lord are pure words. He says, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7. He says, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Because of the word. Your experiences have not been vetted. Your ability to see visions has not been tried, but the word of God has been tested seven times. Let me tell you the truth. If I were to act out everything I saw or everything I thought God was telling me, you would be amazed at the degree to which I would have veered this ministry in error. Because looking at my higher self now, I look at my former self tomorrow and there were a number of things I wrote, believing at that point, convinced that it was God that told me, in the presence of higher light, I know that something was wrong with my seed or my interpretation. Don't build your life just on superstitious spirituality. The word of God has the kind of foundation that your destiny needs. Are we learning now? Yeah. So I can have a vision right now and see myself dipping my hands in oil. And out of that vision, with all due respect now, I can create a monument around that experience. You see that now? That is dangerous. Many people's lives have gone down today because the basis of their confidence is not the word of God. Two more scriptures. Psalm 18 and verse 30. This one blessed me, may it bless you. Psalm 18 and verse 30. The Bible says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of God is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust him. The word of God has been tried. The word of God has been tried. You can stake your life on the word of God. Please look at me. I have taught you here, Koinonia, it is written is greater than I saw. It is written is greater than I heard. It is written is greater than I dreamt. If I dream today that I entered a coffin, I will come out of that coffin and close it. Do you know how I will come out? Number one, I will wake up. That's how to come out. I will wake up from that dream. 
Number two, I will find the scripture that has the energy like a hammer to close that curtain. For instance, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. For instance, are we learning now? I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. It's true. If you say you are going to kill me by divination or witchcraft, my prayer will be for mercy for you. Because I've surrounded my life with the word, not experiences. I will not stand before Satan and say, you don't know what God showed me in that vision. Jesus did not stand and say, do you know where I came from? He said, it is written. Jesus, the word incarnate. You thought that if Satan came to him, you would say you are joking. I came from heaven to earth. That special number will not bring you deliverance. No. Nothing wrong with the song. I'm just saying in this example, when you stand before life, they do not respect I saw. I saw is for your benefit. They do not respect I heard. What you saw only works when it is consistent with what is written. What you heard only works when you say there are anchor scriptures Everything we want to do in this ministry, we never start it until there are anchor scriptures. It may start based on a vision, a prompting of the spirit, or just the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. But the trigger for everything is the word of God. What makes you believe you have great children? I, I, I had a course in counseling and the person who taught us was very smart find out whether the teacher's child is well behaved there are times that all factors can be well yet things don't go well you will need the scripture i am bringing you to a point where you respect the word listen i've had the honor of being close a bit to our fathers of faith in this nation and i can tell you the greatest lesson i've learned from them is that in spite of their prophetic advantage in all its ramification they have a healthy respect for the word of God. In their generations, many of them started by saying God said. There were many people who rose and criticized and some of them have died and gone. I told you here, I was watching Kenneth Hagin. There are two people in their old age who have inspired me greatly in terms of longevity. One is Kenneth Copeland. The other is a great dear wonderful woman called Marilyn Hickney. They are both in their 80s. Now, these people, I've had the honor of following them for many years. They said things that were very childlike, sometimes childish. And we MOGs in our pride, we criticize those people. Some of these people who made all those noise have gone to be with the Lord today. Some of those people have remained stunted today. And these generals, who have lifted the word of God beyond the frailty of their understanding. They have outlasted every mountain. Storms came and went. All kinds of things came and went. But those who were built on the rock. I don't want to take the risk with my life of making the prophetic advantage God gave me become a cause by throwing away the Bible and running koinonia with I saw. We see in part what if I see all of you inside a river? Hello? What if I finish praying and fasting and see all of you in a river? The next thing I say, all of you, let's be on our way to Abuja. Just as an example. No. What if I see all of you in a desert and I say, follow me there? Then what if in that desert I now grow spiritually and find out that that vision was from Satan? I now say, return back here. Can you lead effectively that way? No. Emmanuel, God is with us. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Crown him King of Kings. Crown him Lord. Wonderful, 
Counselor, the mighty God, Emmanuel, God is with us, he shall reign, he shall reign, he shall reign forevermore. Matthew chapter 7 24 and 25 the Bible talks about one who built on a rock please look at me build your marriage on the word not just on emotions find the scripture that becomes the basis of your confidence that your children will not be useless if you think you are rich today because you have a billion naira a million naira in your bank account you are joking. Go and read about people whose wealth turned from grace to grass in one moment. The basis of your remaining must be that which is written. I have come to respect that which is written. I have made the word of God final authority over my life in all matters. And that includes this ministry. No matter what God tells me, I bring it through the sieve of the word. There has to be a scripture. I don't pray foolish prayers. Once I'm not praying in the spirit, I insist and ensure, like you'll be learning, that whatever I'm saying is not driven by sentiments and emotions. The only basis for answered prayer in the scripture is that you pray in accordance with the will of God and his will is captured in his word. Listen to me. Run your business based on the word. Run your ministry based on the word. Do not ignore supernatural experiences. Do not ignore the knowledge that comes through philosophy. There are valuable word compliant thoughts. Do not ignore the power of intellect. No, the word of God does not produce dummies. But exalt the word of God high above and beyond any other thought you have been taught here. Never will there be a time if you ask me why do we hold miracle services? I will show you from scripture. I will not just say God instructed me that the final Sunday of every month be a miracle service. No, no, no. Koinonia, God has given you a mandate to expand to the globe. What is the basis? I saw a vision and I saw fire from Abuja touching several maps you want to run with such a vision there will be no backing it is written someone say it is written go and find what is written concerning your health go and find what is written concerning your destiny i know it's a secular company serving all and sundry but at least the basis of your confidence should be what god has said it is a risk to run your life not submitting to the word of God. Point number two, in making mighty men, men that last, men that remain, men that outlast the storms of life, those who have submitted themselves to the supremacy of the word of God as final authority in all things. Please read your Bible. Study your Bible. Obtain grace from God to read. Don't read to preach. If you're a man of God here, don't just read because you are looking for sermons. No, they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Build your life on the word of God. Build your life on the integrity of scripture. Storms will arise. Rain will come. Men will come. You will stand. No power in existence will sustain what it takes to veer you off the path and the course of destiny. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. If God has called you into the prophetic ministry and God has called you into the apostolic ministry, beware. Do not exalt the word of God. Do not exalt visionary experiences above scripture. And do not lead people entirely based on visionary encounters. There are encounters I've had today, no man on earth has heard about it except me and my notebook. Because some of those encounters may not be safe 
for certain spiritual realms. When you teach people when they have not come into certain enlightenment, Satan will take advantage of their spiritual naivety and replicate that experience, but it will not be by the Spirit of God. When I bring before you visionary experiences, I don't do that in isolation with the Word. The Word of God must become the basis. You must not just read it, submit to it. Let it govern your mind. Let it govern how you behave. Number three, what is the third key that is responsible for building in believers the staying power, the grace to outlast? Are you ready? Build inner strength through consistent prayer. Build inner strength, you may want to add, and stamina through consistent prayer. Oh God, oh God, oh God, as we pray, oh God, oh tell you this if you do not know how to pray you will not last there is a dimension of strength that survives the winds of life that is generated within you when you pray Luke 18 and verse 1 says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint you must build inner strength. Build inner strength. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Let's hurry up. 24 and verse 10. Proverbs 24 and verse 10. Watch this. If thou faint in the day of adversity, in the life of everyone, no matter how yielded you are, there is a season that the Bible calls the day of adversity. And the survival strategy in those seasons is strength 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 are we together you have to be strengthened within your inner man build capacity Elijah build capacity David build capacity Abraham build capacity no matter who you are build capacity it doesn't matter what you are involved with as far as your prophetic destiny is concerned. Build capacity. And build it early. My sister, build capacity. Because one day you will need it. You will need to draw from the strength. There are times when you are about to take a long journey, you charge your phone. Is that true? And when it is fully charged, you can smile. Because you can approximate that from now till that time, you can utilize the strength that, the, that the, the, the phone has. That's how it is. I've seen many people's phones and you'll see it on red. 5%, 2%. The phone does not look like it will die. Notice what happens when the power keeps reducing. Certain features. The phone will start shutting down certain features as a survival strategy. This is what happens with destiny too. The moment your power bank the moment your energy bank starts going down, certain things may have to shut down. One can be your perception. Your ability to perceive spiritual things will have to shut down. Certain other things will shut down. Like it happens to a phone at 15%, 10%, 8%. There are certain features in that phone that you may not, it's called a power saving mode. There are many believers running great destinies on power saving mode. Whereas there is an opportunity to carry a wireless charger. 
a charger that does not look for a wall a charger that answers at the instance of desire are we together prayer is not a burdensome ritual to just feel spiritual can I tell you you will never be able to run certain visions if you do not have the inner strength that comes through prayer and comes with prayer what you see in koinonia today ladies and gentlemen is beyond just excellence and the communication of doctrine there is stamina there is a power bank that can run certain things in the spirit someone sent me a text and said apostle you've been busy all week doing this and that and that and will you have the strength i said me you don't know god me and god have been in this business for a while though there is what we call the spirit of might you cannot fake it believe me i'm not careless with my health but you cannot fake it god will never call you without teaching you the technology that keeps you in strength there are some of you who carry something for two hours and you will yawn for two days you are 25 years you are like a woman who has finished giving birth to 11 children you preach for one hour and return back and say i, I need a vacation destiny wake up strength capacity it happens through the place of prayer somebody went to visit smith wigglesworth years ago his story would tell us that when the guy got there he greeted him and he kept quiet and there was nothing to discuss that's me with goose what told him say can we pray he thought he was just you know father lord we thank you they prayed and the guy was tired he didn't know how to stop smith wiggles word then later he stopped then they spoke a little he said can we pray again and <laughs> a powerful way to drive distractors pray pray When visitors come to your house and they refuse to leave, pray. <laughs> Survival strategies. Pray. Tell them, all right, we've spent two hours just in, I think it's time. Let's lift up our hands and give God praise. And everybody will check their time and leave you in peace. Pray. Because people don't like prayer. They like what prayer does. But they hate the discipline of prayer. And it's an attack. Please hear me. If you hate prayer, it's an attack. Don't feel condemned, but know it's an attack. You wake up in the night. Open up your notebook where God has spoken to you. Shama katabarada. Sleepy eyes. Your tired self. Just start praying. Shabrandos kadiada. Worship is charging the atmosphere. You are a man of God. You don't even know what to do with your church. You've preached every sermon. You just keep praying. As you keep praying, the Spirit of God who can search the heart of the Father will start downloading series to your spirit. You have not taught your people on prayer. You have not taught your... And series can come that can last two years in the place of prayer. Every time is convenient for prayer. But in my personal experience, believe me, I have mastered praying at night. And it, it has provided the richest return on investment in terms of prayer. Discipline yourself and pray. You're a man of God here with all due respect. Don't let your members pray more than you. Why are they there then? You should be sitting down. Prayer is one of such things you cannot fake. You can come out and act like you are prayerful. If you are not, there is an energy that comes from prayer. That one you cannot pretend it. And the energy is perceivable. Even to somebody who is not saved, you can perceive health. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Listen, the moment seasons become unfavorable, minimize discussions, minimize attracting sympathy. That is the time to lock yourself. 
even if you don't understand what is happening why are people dying in my church in three weeks ten people died go and lock your place five of my children mysteriously sick when they made a deposit of 10 million somebody just came and caused trouble and that money disappeared anytime you sense affliction negative seasons go ahead and pray if most believers will do less of talking and more of prayer they will triumph in experience we talk a lot as believers we have not been called to be noisemakers in terms of speaking gibberish the energy of the believer should be invested in building capacity let me teach you something if you are a leader and you talk too much you will lose your honor factor as a leader your word should be mighty the more scarce your word the more people will listen when you speak when you run your mouth anyhow you also run your honor out with it a time will come your words will be so cheap there will be nobody around you to hear it words are expensive don't waste them don't waste them don't waste them leadership 101 words are expensive can I tell you another thing that is expensive your attention don't cheapen your attention attention is an expensive commodity don't invest it in nonsense did you hear what I said your attention is where the direction of your destiny goes to respect your destiny enough to see your attention as an investment don't throw it away over nothing oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me spirit of wisdom say in the name of Jesus I build capacity say it prophetically in the name of Jesus I build capacity oh my dear sister build capacity my dear brother build capacity a day will come something will befall you that you will not have all that energy to pray you will draw from the residue of the energy that comes within your prayer bank please pray don't waste moments don't waste opportunities pray listen let me encourage you if your prayer life has gone down you can join the prayer department as they pray even if you are not a member there even if it's for one week if there's space you can join them to just fan your prayer life to flames discern an attack on your prayer is an attack on your remaining it's an attack on your continuity it's an attack on your stamina that is why it's important to have believers as friends did you hear what I said half the time people used to gossip half the time people used to talk about people and issues if they invest half that time in quality prayer you have any prayer partner that spends half the prayer time gossiping cast him out of your life did you hear what I said? Cast him or her out of your life. Don't waste your time on naysayers and gossips and backbiters who wrap up their gossip in the name of Jesus. Take your destiny seriously. You agree with someone, let us pray. Don't waste your time. And he says, praise God. You've prayed for 10 minutes and you continue speaking nonsense for two hours. Then you wrap it up. You did not pray. You only program woes to your destiny. If you have somebody who should pray, the assignment there is for prayer. Okay, we are praying from 10 to 12. Once it's time, all right, let's begin to pray. Yes, occasionally you may speak to discuss some things to give your prayer perspective. Many prayer warriors have killed the prayer life of their colleagues because they wasted that time on gossips and naysayings and false visions. Pray. 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 You are a mother. Find another mother who can agree with you. Pray. You are a businessman. Find another businessman who can relate with your realm and pray. Are we together? You are a man of God. Pray that God will bring a man of God who genuinely loves you and prays. Not that he's praying with his mouth and with his heart. He's saying, may you die quick.
but when you find people who can agree with you you have your personal prayer altar i have said this endlessly koinonia let me encourage families here build your corporate family prayer altar build it as a discipline now i know that maybe some families may have people who are not born again no problem you can start where you are with wisdom build a family prayer altar pray don't allow the devil come in and ride cheaply into your family by the privilege of god's grace let me encourage every man here take the lead as far as setting the pace for prayer don't say i'm not the prayer type nobody's the prayer type god commands that we pray are we together now obtain grace don't say i'm a ceo prayer is not for pastors don't leave your wife as a naked intercessor with nobody helping her yours is just to submit prayer point by text or on a paper pray you can learn prayer is someone learning build inner strength this is something God has taught me one of our fathers in the faith every time I've had the opportunity to see him particularly when preparing for administration as soon as I enter his office he's praying in tongues praying in tongues praying in tongues praying in tongues he will speak a little and then once he has a little chance he's praying in tongues I said ah that's the secret they understand that capacity is a necessary is a necessary requirement as far as remaining is concerned number four is God helping someone you would outlast every adversity you would outlast every season every condition in the name of Jesus 30 years from now you will still be standing are you receiving that 50 years from now you will still be standing you will not stand alone. Your children will stand with you. Your family will stand with you. Your business will stand with you. Your organization will stand with you. The cancer that fights longevity, let it be far from your life. Very quickly, number four. What is the fourth key that empowers men to last? Giving them longevity of impact. Providing the staying power are you ready be joyful void of bitterness and offense write it down be joyful comma void of bitterness and offense you want to last I show you ancient secrets be joyful void of bitterness and offense Philippians 4 4 let's work together media help me Philippians 4 and verse 4 be joyful Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Someone shout rejoice. rejoice. Say myself. Rejoice. rejoice. One more time. Say myself. myself. Rejoice. rejoice. Yes. No more crying. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Proverbs 17, 22. Rejoice. Be joyful. Void of bitterness and void of offense let's read together one to read a merry heart doeth good like medicine but a broken spirit dried the bones that means a condition can start from the spirit and affect you health wise that your spirit can be broken and the effect of the broken spirit can be seen in your health hallelujah with all due respect and I say this to the glory of God you carry a blood pressure meter and measure me you will think I'm a baby that just came out of my mother's womb. Say joy. joy. There are many of you having high blood pressure over nothing. You need to rid yourself of bitterness. Rid yourself of offense. Ephesians 4.31 I'm showing you a very powerful secret. This fourth one is a very serious one. Let's read together. Don't be tired of reading. You're in church. Ready? One, to read. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Did God just speak to you? Bitterness. Let me tell you this. There are two keys I have learned 
to remain joyful void of bitterness void of offense I want to share it with you please learn this as a powerful key this is a deliverance service for someone now number one always interpret things from the lens of God's sovereign plan this is the first key to remaining joyful free from bitterness always interpret things no matter what happens to you interpret it from the lens of God's sovereign plan in Romans 8 28 please give it to us quickly Romans 8 28 we know that all things someone shout all things one more time sounds like you're sleeping koinonia we know that all things work together work together disappointments betrayals backstabbings backbiting are we together falsehood that god has an ability to mix it like a cake maker mixes all kinds of things when you watch people making cake, they will put something that looks like blue. Add another thing that looks like green. Don't mind them. It's working together. At the end of it, it will produce something that you will eat and not want to stop eating. All things work together. For good to them that love God. To them who are called. Listen. No matter what happens in your life, especially negative things, there are two questions you need to ask. Number one, do I love God? number two am i walking in obedience if these two things are there find rest do i love god genuinely and sincerely number two am i walking in obedience to his word and it's only you and god that can answer that question are we together always interpret things from god's sovereign plan genesis 50 19 and 20 after the brothers of Joseph betrayed him and all kinds of things happened, Joseph told them, and Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Watch this, verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people. Everybody say to save much people. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. That's what God is doing in someone's life. Hey, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. One more time, sing it from the depth of your heart. You take what the enemy meant. So, listen, I'm giving you a key to remain joyful, void of bitterness. A or one, interpret things from the lens of God's sovereign plan. No matter how negative it is, James 1, 2 to 4. The Bible says, count it all joy. Let's hurry up. Count it all joy. What did he say to count it as? Do not count it as a loss. Do not count it as a disappointment. Oh, this is where champions have been wounded. Generals have been wounded because of offense. This one said this about me. Me? This one did this. And you fade away your potential for remaining. When you see men who remain, there are people who have mastered the secret of joy void of offense void of bitterness this one is particularly to leaders there is no leader who got to the leadership place by growth who has not faced betrayal huh leaders backstabbing or oh, in its variety unfortunately it will not end at this level it is the reality of human nature but you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good so you can laugh through storms you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it all this i am angry oh till i go to my grave 
over my ah oh, come on throw away that thing and grow up never wait for men to change to be happy that is an expensive risk with your destiny never wait for men to change or repent or be converted or be wise don't risk your happiness and your joy that much no <laughs> are you learning always interpret things from God's sovereign plan no matter what it is God has a way of working it for my good whether it is criticism whether it is persecution whether it's backbiting sometimes God can allow it as painful as it is to forewarn you of something that can destroy you in the future sometimes God can use it to help you sometimes God can use it to put you in check sometimes God can use it to test your stamina always see things from the standpoint of God's sovereign love God's sovereign plan that everything in your life is adding up you are going forward gravitating forward second thought to help you remain in joy are you learning koinonia when you go through any kind of unfavorable season always focus on the goodness of God this is a big secret in my life don't focus on pain don't focus on stories don't focus on people whether people who hurt you focus on the goodness of God something happens to you when you begin to focus on the goodness of God it has a therapeutic effect it can heal you from pain are we together now I'm supposed to be promoted a director but somebody played politics and they push me away every time you see that person who played politics you will feel like someone give me a knife you can't be living in that pain the person is a director you are the one suffering bitterness is like swallowing poison and watching in frustration why the other person is not dying no. hmm. men will be men wise men will remain wise till they change fools will remain fools till they change mediocre will remain mediocre till they change don't wait for people to change before you become happy and joyful always think of the goodness of God no matter what is wrong in your life or not right in your life there is something God has done well am I right on that there is something God has done right let me give you a big secret count your blessings every time you want to complain and you're in pain and bitterness that's what John the Baptist would have done he wouldn't have died like this if John the Baptist made up his mind that well Lord, thank you for the privilege to have been the one to ordain Jesus. I've been ignored right now. Jesus is not even asking how I'm doing. But nonetheless, I give you praise and I give you glory. You have been good to me. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will see of the goodness of God. Very powerful song. Listen, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Prophesy to yourself. Your goodness is running after. Leave all those who hate you. They are not the reason why you are not going forward. That is an extra luggage you want to carry. You are on a flight. Leave all the naysayers and the backbiters and the ill wishers and the Judas is kissing you as a sign. You just leave them. Focus on the goodness of God. Can I tell you, psychologists teach us that focus creates feelings. If you are angry right now and I tell you I just transferred two million naira, it doesn't matter whether I'm playing or not. What did you hear? Two million naira. You just smile and say, is it true? You are still very fine, but you are happy. The same way you can stand in the mirror and say it doesn't matter. Listen, I'm sharing with you irrefutable principles. People will look at you and say, Madam, don't you get angry? Are you not a human being in this Nigeria? You tell them, I found the way of the Spirit. 
that I can rejoice always void of offense void of bitterness you can walk to your office and find in the middle of people conspiring your downfall and greet all of them would you like to have coffee or something can I get you something and they smile at you every time you rejoice in the presence of enemies you heap up coal on them not pretentious joy not ha 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 you are dying they are seeing you bleed that is fake laughter that is as a result of revelation dominion that your destiny depends on you and God are we together there are some tears that are unnecessary respect your tears don't shed it carelessly go back home tonight and think of the goodness of God you are still in that one rent one room but give God thanks I have food on my table Lord I give you thanks are you learning this now honestly if this is what you came to learn tonight do you know that there are great people who are wounded and I've taught you those who refuse to be healed become enemies of their destiny and the destiny of others nobody who is healed will wound others most people who wound others are people who are trying to heal and they do not know how to heal so they inflict pain on others to find comfort it's a psychological principle when you failed in life you get angry when you see others excelling so it's some Thing in your heart wishes that they come down to your level so that you can find comfort when you bring them down you now feel bad because you were not wicked you were just frustrated your goodness is running after let me advise you here if you're a man of God or a CEO don't give yourself headache going around to say what are they saying about me in this office do they like me what do you think the person you are saying will answer? Say, in fact, they said the other day, ah, you are the only one who... <laughs> you are asking the mastermind of your hatred what they are saying about you. And they said, the last time, I think I heard that uh, they said you are such a nice leader. In fact, they look forward to you becoming GM. You say, you mean it? Even that other man said it. Said, ah, I'm the one, trust me. You now give him something and he becomes an ally. And once you move, he just looks at you with pity and says, what a fool of a leader. Can I tell you, one of the quality of leaders is that they have so built themselves understanding the world of men, almost nothing surprises them. When you find a leader who puts his hand on his head in shock, he was not trained well because leaders understand men. Their strengths and their vulnerabilities that good men can become wicked. They have their will. Wicked men can repent to become champions. So you do not tie the vacillations of men to your growth. Give them an opportunity to be all that they want to be, to explore all the versions of themselves, but maintain your health for the sake of his name and your destiny. Is someone learning? Say, I remain joyful. This is true for ministers, spouses remain joyful joyful in the lord this is my mentality i look at everything that happens around my life from the standpoint of god's love and his sovereign power i'm aware of how jealous god is for me so i interpret everything from a winner's view honestly this is my life truly speaking Is someone learning? Get used to men before they break your heart into pieces. Koinonia, hear my advice. My dear sister, get used to men before they break your heart into pieces. I'm not talking in terms of relationship. I'm speaking seriously here. <laughs> Brothers, get used to men before they break your heart into pieces. Leaders, get used to men. You will always find basis for conflict, betrayal, backstabbing in every organization, including Koinonia. There is no organization that is 100% free of these tendencies. Your assignment as a leader is to culture your people to minimize it. Waiting for perfection to find joy. It's like waiting for the cloud to touch the ground. It will not happen. Has someone grown tonight? Be joyful, oh.
go back home and rejoice and dance and somebody looks at you and says just to let you know you are not coming back to this office again why what did I do you may feel the pain but you just remember my sermon some of you will hear this my voice again in the night while you are sleeping and I will shout it as my friend stop crying anyhow stop crying rejoice I've already taught you here that everybody cannot hate you. Remember? It's a law that does not work for any man. Even Satan is not hated by everybody. I've taught you this. Terrorists have wives. They met somebody as a terrorist and said, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And the lady said, I agree. Knowing he's a terrorist. There is hope for everybody. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Hallelujah. Let me give you number five. We have to end. See why it's good to come to church? It's good to come to Koinonia. Now hear this, to wrap up number four so that you write five, I wrote something here that the Lord ministered to me this afternoon, that joy is one of the greatest demonstrations of faith. Joy is one of the greatest demonstrations of faith. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8 Joy is one of the greatest demonstrations of faith. Here's what the Bible says. Whom have not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not ye yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory you haven't seen it yet things have not added up yet the rent has not come yet are we together but you rejoice rejoice someone when you go back home lock yourself today and laugh and smile and rejoice truly and if you don't know what to rejoice about, think about the five word-based funniest occurrences in your life. Reminisce on them and laugh. Laugh away nonsense. Laugh away childishness. Rejoice. Oh, I remember. One time in the university, I was waiting for school fees. I remember. I cried for nothing. And you, before you know it, you are glowing and rejoicing. Yet, you have not paid your rent. And because joy is what helps us and brings us into the harvest whilst you are rejoicing god is seeing a man of faith he will wake someone and say send an alert of one million this one million i've been talking about and this two million i've been talking about i've taught you if you don't believe it please allow your neighbor receive in peace <laughs> number five the staying power God is raising joyful people tonight. For someone, 10 people have called you 50 years now, whereas you are 31. That's a message. You are losing joy. He's speaking on your face. Someone looks at you and says, are you in my generation? And you say, are you joking? I'm a, I'm a young man. They say, I can't believe it. You have wrinkled yourself as a result of pain. Share up and glow. Share up and glow. Share up and glow. Share up and glow. I don't care what is working or not working. Number five. Are you ready? The final key I'm going to give you tonight that has been responsible for the longevity of men. Impact. Always keep the vision of your future and your destination before you. Keep it higher than every challenge. Keep it higher than every obstacle. I'll take it again. Always keep the vision of your future, the vision of your prophetic destiny before you. Something happens when you see the end. Something happens when you look at the vision. Exalt the vision beyond the challenges. Exalt the vision beyond the vicissitudes of life. And you have the stamina to remain and continue. Philippians 3.13 3.13 Philippians 
brethren I count not myself to have apprehended it says but one thing I do forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things everybody say those things there are things before you can I give you an example the higher realm of you of you being anointed there are anointings you have not received man of God there are there are churches the globe is still waiting for you for the impact the imprint of God upon your life you must learn to look away look beyond look up reaching forth for the things that are before me I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus every calling from God is not a low calling it's only challenges that are on the ground. Challenges come to you at your level, but your calling is usually high because it demands that you rise higher than the challenges. Are you seeing that now? Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. I wish we could find NLT. Luke 9, 62. Let's hurry up. God is speaking to someone tonight. Luke 9, 62. NLT. But Jesus said unto him, Nasa Hanuna Akanke Kenoma. I'm only singing the verse. Hey, I belong to Jesus. Never going back. Never going back. Nina Yesune Bazankoba. Bazankoba. So many, many people, they don't know that I've made my choice to follow Jesus, I follow the Lamb wherever He leads. Powerful song. So many, many people, they don't know that I've made my choice to follow Jesus, I follow the Lamb. Wherever he leads, do you know the song now? Nina is a name, Nina is a name, Bazan Koma, Bazan Koma, Bayaba, Nina is a name, Bazan Koma, Bazan Koma, Bayaba. Luke chapter 9. Someone you just sang a song of comfort for yourself. No giving up. No going back. Let's finish that scripture. Koinonia, don't tempt me. I will keep you here till tomorrow. The Bible says anyone, watch this. Anyone who puts his hand on a plow and looks back. Either because they are calling you. Backbiters are calling your name. Mediocres and naysayers distracting you from prophecy or seasons, unfavorable seasons. It says if you do so, you are not fit. I'm never going back. I'll never go back. One more time. I belong to Jesus. Never going back. Never going back. Always keep the vision of your future. It's been a powerful secret in my life. Open that book again. Look at what he told you. Open that book again. Review his speakings. Man of God, he did not tell you you will come to Abuja and die. Why do you want to dig the grave? He never told you you will come here and fail. Never told you you will relocate and go to America, Canada, wherever, Japan, wherever. No. God does not call men and leave them on the way. He is a finisher. Did you ever read that he's called author? And finisher say it after me author and that means you will finish 
I read a book many years ago by Steve Farah called Finishing Strong. Profound book that influenced my understanding. No matter how close you are to destiny, if you don't finish, you will stay in the same group with those who did not start. You have come too far. Are we together? You've held the plow ready for harvest in ministry, in business. Refuse to be distracted. The world is full of noisemakers, naysayers, people full of pain. They may not be wicked people, just wounded and confused people, hoping they can use your pain to find meaning to their lives. Don't hate people. You to look at them from the lens of their weaknesses and focus on your future. Aside from joy, add vision. A visionless man is a defeated man already. If nothing ever attacks you, you have failed. Are we together? Vision gives you focus. Among the many things that vision gives you is the opportunity to say no to many things, including good things that are not pro-destiny. When Satan brings evil things and you easily overcome them, he will line up many good things that are not needed in your destiny. How many of you know that good things can kill? Many good things can kill. Satan used, it is written against Jesus. Just because it is good does not mean it is profitable for your destiny. There are many good things that can destroy. You need to trust the spirit of grace. Vision prunes your relationships. Vision prunes your appetite. It prunes the things you can do and the things you cannot do. It gives you the focus to be able to say yes. If the only thing you reject in your life are bad things, you are small. You need to reject many good things in your life. Because Martha, Martha can be worried and obsessed about many things. Her preparing a meal for Jesus was not bad. But Jesus said one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the secrets that empower believers to stay. Number one, being strong in the Lord. Capacity and strength that is derived from knowing the God of the Bible. Number two, submitting to the supremacy of the word of God as final authority in all things and in all matters, beyond feelings, beyond emotions, beyond psychology, beyond intellect, even beyond spiritual supposedly and visionary experiences. Number three, build inner strength, capacity for the journey through prayer. Men and women who know how to invest in prayer are men who have longevity of impact. Four, be joyful, goodness. I can drum this again. Void of bitterness, void of offense. Accept humans for the way they are. Hope for the best. Hope that they change. Hope that they find God. Hope that they improve. But until then, do not destroy your joy because of men. The reality of their humanity will always play out at one point or the other. And finally, always keep your vision. Always keep your vision. Always keep your vision. The vision of your future. The vision of prophecy. The vision of your destination. The vision of that which God has called you to do. Keep it before you. Every time you are discouraged and there is nothing else around you that inspires you, look up. Let your vision be clear enough. If you need to give it a pictorial representation to encourage you, do so. If God has called you to a global ministry and you need to get them the globe and put it in your office, put it before you, go ahead. God has called you to be an evangelist and you need the map of the world, place it on your wall. It's a worthy investment. Whatever you can do by God and under grace, to encourage yourself and keep yourself alive that do and here's how the Bible ends it all haven't done all to stand it says stand I mean stand <laughs> you said stand and you are sitting Take what the enemy meant for evil, and 
one prayer tonight our time is up one prayer and then I make the altar call and we're done the one prayer is Lord I obtain the grace to outlast to outlast storms to outlast challenges to outlast vicissitudes to outlast seasons someone pray as simple as this prayer is I obtain grace grace to last I receive the staying power the staying power in ministry the staying power for my business for my career someone by this prayer you need to return back to business a man of God needs to return back to ministry is someone praying return back to your children you need to return back you are a winner for sure at the end of it you win the hand of God insists that you win one minute you are praying from the depth of your heart I obtain grace to last the finisher's grace is with me at work in me I weary storms I outdo seasons I outlast challenges Oh yes, come on, pray. Nothing in my life that is unfavorable today will remain as it is. But when all is said and done, I will be standing, standing strong, standing victorious, standing graceful. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The altar call and I speak the grace upon you. I want to give you an opportunity for your sake who are, who are still staying a minute or two. I want you to come to the Prince of Peace, the one who can help you. The journey to lasting belongs, it begins by knowing him. You just said that you belong to him. Let's minimize movement. I'm still going to speak over your life. It always gives me joy to lead people to Jesus. This is not religion. Is from my heart because the more you give people a chance to know him the more you give them an opportunity to live out their prophetic destinies you are in this place following online across all our expressions overflows and you are saying apostle if you will ask me I will come to make it right with Jesus whether you are making that decision for the first time or you are making that decision you've made it again and you are rededicating your life I know there has to be one person it is that one person I'm speaking to Someone in this place is angry at the opportunity you have given Satan and you are saying no more. It cannot happen again. I'm going to count one to five. Wherever you are, very boldly, leave your seat and come stand here. Leave your seat and come and stand here. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Come to Jesus. Come. 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 Bazan coma baya Nina Yesu ne bazan coma Bazan coma baya ba Nasa haluna akan ke keno ma Let's celebrate them as they come. Is someone still coming? Is someone still running to Jesus? God bless you. Bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making this noble decision. I appreciate you for the courage to be here. And listen, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible declares that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life those who are making this decision online as i lead them to this prayer 
please join them lift your right hand high above your head say this after me Lord Jesus one more time as loud as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of the living God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that I'm a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your beautiful hands lifted please father thank you for this once let the power of sin Satan hell and the grave be broken over their lives I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that you walk in victory from today the grace that keeps the grace that causes to be victorious let that grace rest upon you and from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name we pray please do me a favor by moving to my right you have the counselors waving the placard they will have a word with you just for a minute and you'll be back to your seat let's honor them very quickly give them a big God bless you koinonia hallelujah let me speak over your life in the name of Jesus this grace to outlast let it rest on you I speak the staying power over you you will not fall by the wayside you will not be ichabod in the name of Jesus Christ for those who are weak and weary downcast and discouraged find hope I say it again find hope find strength the grace to return for someone the grace to pursue the grace to overtake and by all means the grace to recover let it be released upon you I call you a victor I call you a sign and a wonder his hand is strong upon you let this week be a week of blessings for you testimonies from Monday to Sunday good news from Monday to Sunday laughter from Monday to Sunday abundance from Monday to Sunday the ministry of men from Monday to Sunday in the name of Jesus you return with testimonies by Sunday it will be clear from your life that God can help men in Jesus mighty name we pray give Jesus a big hand clap of praise let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely God's goodness and mercy is follow hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain